Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey, everybody. It's Joe and Angel. We have a guest today on Mailbag Monday. We're getting ready to open up the, the cave and let it all out. So, Angel, you want to introduce our guest today? Well, this is Mike. <laughs> And he is part of our staff, a very important part of our staff. Yeah, he runs everything. And just... we are thrilled to have him. He's going to start joining us uh, on this, and uh, he has some interesting insight, let's say the least. <laughs> I'm here to to calm the the storm. <laughs> yeah. And if there's anything come question, like uh, like I'm like a referee, basically. That's yeah. good. That's it. Basically That's it. A referee. <laughs> That's what Mike's job is. Yes. We're Hi. so glad you joined us today. Uh, if you're watching us on Facebook, please share with your friends. If you're watching us on Instagram, uh, don't forget to press the uh, subscribe button. <laughs> and uh, just thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, pass these around. Pray for us. Uh, we, we so appreciate you spending your Mondays with us. All right, Joe. Did you have brothers or sisters? Why don't we ever hear about them? What are you hiding? <laughs> Me personally? <laughs> Yeah, I had one sister, no brothers. Uh, my dad came from a big family. My dad had 12 brothers and sisters. My father had 12 brothers and sisters. And so they decided to flip that. He said, Dad said, I got tired of looking for a, a shoe to wear and a biscuit to eat. So when I started having kids, I went one each. That's all God made. I went one boy, one girl. And when that girl came out, I was the boy. I was first. And when sister came out, he made sure that was it. And so, but I flipped it again. So I ended up with six. So. You know, everybody's chasing something, I guess. So, uh, no, I got one sister. I do. Small family. Something major happened to your sister when you were a young boy. Yeah. Uh, we were at a trout fishing up in the Tennessee mountains. And uh, uh, little kids, family we were with, had a little pistol he got out of a glove compartment. We were little kids, under seven. And so it was still in the holster, and he was just playing with it. And he's sitting there, past his seat in the car, and I'm standing in the middle. My sister's sitting with the door open, and he just pulled the thing, and the bullet went off, and it shot my sister in the top of the hip in the back. And so we tore out of there for about 27 miles to a hospital in the middle of nowhere, and uh, they realized the uh, bullet hit the uh, bone and scattered, and they so they sent her to a bigger hospital down in Chattanooga and several weeks in the hospital, and they tried to figure out what it was. So part of the bullet lodged in her pancreas. Her pancreas stopped working, and it got complicated. So she developed diabetes because of that, and so she had to get a shot every day, and so it was an exciting it really, run. It really it, <laughs> it, it changed everything. Is she still it with changed. us? I mean, she lived, she lived for it. Uh, she was the longest living kidney recipient when she passed away she lived to be 59 mm-hmm. yeah and most people didn't make it past 40 you know so she she set a record and uh very active did pottery real famous in the south for this raku pottery that she designed and they did art shows for her and stuff so very involved very busy but it did life. change your family dynamic changed Something everything like that. yeah yeah so, changed uh, everything joe would have to take a spoon in his pocket and uh I go to school every day with a quarter in one pocket and a spoon in the other because uh, we didn't know much about diabetics back then. So if her sugar got out of whack, she'd go into a coma. She'd be sitting in class and her eyes roll back in her head. She'd start chewing on her tongue. And they knew to come get me. So little old country high school or elementary school, so they come get me. So I'd run down the thing and I'd shove a spoon in her mouth. And I said, keep that in her mouth. And I'd run down and had a Coke machine right next and to And you the, were like seven. Yeah, next to the principal's office. So I'd go get Gosh. a quarter. I'd get a Coke out of it. And I'd put a, pour a Coke down her. And in about three minutes, she'd come back to normal. And so I'd get the spoon back out, clean it off, put it back in my pocket, go back to class. So it was an exciting childhood. <laughs> <laughs> when, uh, when, this is a weird, weird story to go along with that. But when Nicole, uh, we moved and we went to a new private school right and we got there late and so the uniforms that had already been purchased you had to order them and they hadn't come in yet but they had some they had a little store where you could buy like some kids had sold their last year's uniforms right and so this one kid I, we got her uniforms and nicole it just, just happened was in that kid's class and that kid had diabetes and had to get shots every day <laughs> well, one day nicole comes home just freaking out because she had saw her name inside of her collar. And she said, is diabetes contagious? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, we didn't know. We're kids. We, we, know, we yeah, didn't know anything. Yeah. Well, that was that was pretty traumatic. So, You know, it, 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 everybody's listening has been through this. 
uh, it, it really wasn't. It was not. It was That's just, all you knew. It we didn't know anything straight. different. We don't know any different. You know, it's like, what are you doing? Well, I got a spoon in the quarter in case something goes on, and we're just living our life. And so it might be a family reunion, might just be on a school bus, might be in a classroom. What's going to happen? Well, she might start rolling her eyes back in her head, so i got to get a spoon in there so she won't swallow her tongue. Oh, and you poured the Coke? Just Coca-Cola, got to get sugar in it because her I sugar. I get her to swallow it if she was freaking out. I mean, oh, man, I get that head back, she's going to swallow it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see a video. I can make her kind swallow of, like, Yeah, like waterboarding. It's going down, was... buddy. That Coca <laughs> down your nose, down your mouth, it's going in. I was good at it. I really was. See, where, whereas my brother, all I'd have to do is sing in the backseat of a car, and they'd both beat me up. But it must have felt <laughs> yeah. like the same kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> no, but you did You did have one sister. Yes, I did. And all it right. was an eventful time. It was. But she had a normal life. She was a cheerleader and went to college and uh, had a normal life. Now, she missed they had these fancy things where you didn't have to take a shot every day. It's a little square thing you wore on your side, and they just had the needle go into your skin, and so it just automatically dispensed instant as your as the meter would read out. You need some sugar, and you didn't have to get a shot. It just automatically fed whatever you needed. So, man, it's great. The technology was phenomenal. That happened. Had you ever heard that story? I, I've never known. I never heard you talk about your sister at all. Like I was sitting there going, "What happened? Yeah, to yeah. You? How come yeah. we don't ever talk about it?" Trout fishing in the middle of nowhere. Hawassi Dam in the middle of nowhere at Appalachian Mountain. And the, gut, the, the, the the bullet went right in front of you. Went right in front of my legs. Should have hit me in the knee, but it didn't. The old accidental shooting mm-hmm. routine. Yeah, okay. <laughs> all right, let's get into this now that we've taken a little side trail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. It's Mike. we got to blame him. <laughs> <laughs> always, always. Yeah, Mike is a he, – he, he, he is a water I'm referee, referee, and he, I'm also the, the – target. I have the absorbed yeah, – yeah. the, <laughs> the abuse, yeah. Oh. Okay. Now, Joe, Mike, what do you think? When are white lies always wrong? I'm asking because there are times <laughs> that saying what you feel is true can cause more harm than just by telling the flat-out truth. Well, there it is. There's that smoking gun. There's that wishy-washy. We well, just never know. You know, you might just need to tell a little lie, not a big lie, not a not a hell lie, just a half-hell lie. Just not go to hell, but... Just, Look toward hell and just lying's lying. Liars go to hell. By the way, it's in Revelation. Outside the gate, the big gate, heaven are liars. <laughs> it's scary. That's a scary scripture. Yeah, who says that? Well, there's fornicators and murders and and liars. They're all outside the gate of heaven. They don't get to go in. So okay, but 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 you here it comes. But well, you see those people that are really just obnoxious, and they tell you whatever. There's no filter. Well. And they'll say like, "You got a haircut." Like one, one, <laughs> one time, one time, I remember I got I cut yeah. my hair short, and I went to church, and this lady goes, oh. "I'm glad you're growing that out. It made you look harsh with that other haircut." And I'm like, <laughs> "I was thinking, have you seen your hair lately?" But uh, yeah. So, what do you consider that? Well, yeah. There, if you're not used to that, then you might as well just leave the planet and go into heaven because you're going to be. You're <laughs> well, going to be. I, I, I'll say this: that people in general, I think. I think a lot of people say uh, they want the truth. No, they don't. No, they don't. Nobody people wants tell the you, truth. No, I want you to tell me the truth. Seriously. No, you don't. Yeah. Because no, seriously, I mean, how many people really want the truth? They don't. That's they want, true. They want to hear something. They want to hear something. Well, we that, all, you know, we all grow up the good. same way. Yeah. We want somebody to like us. And people don't like if you're mean or if you're ugly or tell nasty stuff. So we, we gum, gum flap. We learned it early. I'm first grade. But kindergarten hadn't been invented yet, I guess, not in my state. So I'm first grade. It's like, and you learn first two weeks of school. Man, I'm in a third reading group. What's that mean? You're a doofus. <laughs> you're a doofus. You're in a third reading group. And I didn't realize that to say, we, oh, man, I'm a doofus. And so, you know, and so you learn uh, that uh, it's, like, it's in your family. This is a school classroom and there's competition. Even when you go on recess, you got to outrun the other guys to get to the monkey bars because they're going to get the pair first. And 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 it's like we had a we had a kid when I was in the second grade, Cletus. Cletus came to school one day. True and officer brought him in in handcuffs. <laughs> second grade, true story. Second grade, so we're all second graders, so you know we're all about seven years old. And all of a sudden, this true and officer comes in this big guy. You know, he's sixteen. He's a big old. He's a big boy. Handcuffs. In what grade is this? Second grade. This is the second grade class. Whoa. Hickson Elementary. <laughs> Brought him in, and we thought, "Good Lord, who's this?" Boys and girls. She first said, "I want to meet your new student. This is Cletus. He's going to be a new student." 
I thought, holy grail. And so we had to get him out of desk in high school. He wouldn't fit in the desk. And so and then, then at, at, you know, break time, we go out and recess for 30 minutes on the playground. Well, Cletus is big enough. He could tear limbs off a big old pine tree. And he, he for fun, he'd beat the rest of it. <laughs> So you need to get up, run that when you, when the bell rang for get for recess, you ran out there as fast as you could get us hop on that monkey bars you can, so Cletus can't reach it. So during recess, everybody's on top of the monkey bars. Nobody's on the swing. So you got to get where Cletus can't whip you because you know? he loved to chase us and beat us. And so I remember one day at lunch, we're sitting there eating, and you know he's a big old boy, never wore socks, big old brogan boots, and he was just he never taught much. And all of a sudden he's there one day at lunch, we're all sitting, everybody's yapping. All of a sudden, Cletus spoke, and he said, I'm dumb. I'm, and me and old Mike Blake said, I'm sorry, what? I'm dumb. I've always been dumb. And so we realized it's what his mom and dad had told him. you dumb. you just dumb, son. you just dumb. So and it, it stuck. And he's 16. Yeah. He still believes it. Yeah. And so he didn't make it out of the second grade. They, he ran away again. They never found him. So. Yeah, but that, that's just child abuse there I that mean, is <laughs> but the uh, uh the we, tell, did, we didn't know that term child abuse yeah <laughs> when uh, I was tell, a them, kid. tell them the true thing though i mean I, it's like it's just a rough thing and because because there's sometimes i think it's almost easier in in marriage to me to be able to tell the truth because it's like uh you, you know each other at, at some point i hope we all get to the point where we're not questioning know, we, when know. you quit questioning each other's love for, you know for each other then you can actually say you know well i mean Here's the the proverbial. Does this make me look fat? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you honey. You, you look enormous in that. Yeah. that yeah. You can't wear those You're bright colors. You're absolutely huge. Dark. Get that dark color. Yeah. Um, but but it's when you when you don't know the people very well. I well, think it's hard to to tell people like that the truth. But yes. it's like sometimes it's better to just keep your mouth shut. Well, I'd answer you, but well, you'll be, be offended. Be slow to speak, quick to hear. You yeah. don't lie, you just don't say anything. Yeah, and I think yeah. you, you can be courteous and kind, yeah. but you do have to be careful. One time I told a little lie that... that uh, How I, little was it? Well, real I said that Santa Claus was real. Whoa. And when my kids found out that, that I had Whoa. not told the truth, they still do not like that. And so... Uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. And we had a blast celebrating Santa, but oh man! But I, I got first Christmas. I knew there wasn't one. I stayed awake all night Christmas Eve. He's not coming. He's not coming. He never was coming. He doesn't exist. That was my one hope for a year. Well, I, well, I, well I'm telling you <laughs> seriously. And I thought my parents lied. They lied about something important like Santa Claus. I mean, what, are they lying about Jesus? Are they lying about God? They lie about Santa Claus. They lie about anything. And you just thought. And I'm really. I just laid awake thinking. My well, and every lied. kid is so different because it didn't affect my son that much. My daughter still has a little edge <laughs> when she talks about it. <laughs> so, so white lies are out then, is what we're all yes. lies are out. You, yeah. you got to learn to. Uh, a partial the, truth is a lie. Partial truth is a lie. You got to tell the truth. Just be slow to speak, quick to hear. And if you say something, just just smile a lot. I, just, I told my kids, well, "What do you say? Nothing. Don't say anything." Somebody asked you, "What do you think?" Nothing. Yeah, I don't think anything. I don't. And now men can do that. Men can honestly not think, but women do. They think all the time. So you just got to realize something. Don't share. Even we've all had the things. Listen, I grew up in the country. All the women are talking on the phone, talking across the fence. Yappity 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 yappity. They're sharing all kinds of stories they shouldn't be telling. You know, because that's what we did. But you realize, you know, as a guy, you can't share everything on. That'll get you in a fight on the playground. You can't tell everything you know. Hey, Billy Bob's an idiot. Well, you know, he's yeah, got a yeah. cousin up in the eighth grade. He's going to find you this afternoon, beat the dog out of you. He's like, you can't share stuff. Don't share stuff. And you, it's before you heard the scripture, slow to speak, quick to hear. Uh, soft answer turns away wrath. If you can't say anything good, don't say anything at all. Just keep it to yourself. What do you think? Nothing. Because there's, there's a pressure there. You feel like you have to. You don't have to do anything and, but what my, other than tell the truth. Well, what you brought up about husbands and wives is just that's the big challenge. Because most yeah. people get married. You've never told the truth. You've lied your whole way. That's why you, how do you got a date? <laughs> <laughs> you know? You're not the, yeah. And it's after you get married, you realize, well, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't know that. Well, I didn't know that. And it's a revelation. Marriage is, you know, two it's just two ignorant people growing up together. Every day is a new revelation. Well, I didn't know that. You can learn stuff about your spouse. If you're married for 50 years, you'll learn something, the 50 year of marriage, that you didn't know. Well, I didn't know that. Well, that's what two people are growing up together is all about. And so 
you got to tell the truth, but you can't just be blunt. You got to have some tact. Yeah. It's like, and I thought I need to share, but not right now. All right. We're all three going to answer this individually. Ready? No. Okay. <laughs> what was one of your worst parenting moments? On the receiving or giving in? I didn't say. Mike, I know you go first. I know mine. Okay, go. Okay, so I was cleaning our van, and my youngest was probably about four years old. <laughs> and I'm cleaning my van in the driveway, and I have the back, the back uh, – door open you know and he comes and he asks if he can drive he you know so i go sure you can drive so he wants to get behind the wheel i know what he wants to do right so you know instead of going around all the doors are open even the back right but instead of going around to all you know to the side door to the driver's door and crawling in he goes over every seat like a four-year-old <laughs> yeah okay Infinite so what he does is he he crawls up in the driver's seat And he puts his hands on the wheel, and the first thing he does is turn around and go, okay, you kids, shut up and sit down. (laughs) (laughs) We have a revelation. Most kids would make like a car driving noise or pretend like they're driving. Now, he turns around and yells at the kids to shut up and sit down. So Mm, that's when I knew, wow. (laughs) (laughs) Oh well, uh, that's when I knew that Sherry should, my wife yeah. should, she should. And, and by the way, Josh different. that does Wednesdays with Joe is his son, so it's oh, yeah, the yeah. one you're talking about. Yeah, Josh, yeah, the one, the one you see on Wednesdays. Yes, yeah, so that yeah. is so funny. That is yeah. hilarious. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, that's a reflection. I knew there were There's issues. There's a mirror. There. A mirror. Yes. You know, I know. But I've been working with Sherry, and, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she doesn't. You know, uh, she's, she's, she's better. She's getting now. better. Getting yeah, better. she's getting better. Yeah, I've been good, working with her. Good. All right. Well, for me, without a. Without a doubt. I mean, it was the day I told my kids we were getting a divorce. You Ooh. know, it was horrible because I remember my son burst into tears and said, you said we'd be together forever. Ugh, I could cry thinking about that if I thought about it too much. And it was just one of the worst moments of my life. I would not want anybody to go through that or relive nope. it. Nope. It's not the will of God. Nope. And what was yours? Well, there's a lot of stories. Yeah, uh, there's a ton. Everybody has more than one. (laughs) How do you pick the worst? Yeah, go ahead, Joe. You got to have a good one. Uh, Well, uh, uh, okay, let's see. Okay, statute of limitations is seven years. As long as it's been seven years, you can't go to jail for this answer. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) It was a revelation when my kids got older. We got where we didn't have to hire a babysitter. Yeah, we just have the older kids watch the younger kids because it's such a wide age thing, and so it was after they became adults. We were sharing them that Thanksgiving, and uh, and they and the young kids said, "You you don't know what they did to us when you left us with them." I said, "What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. Oh man, they'd lock us in the closet. Who? No. The older kids would lock oh. the young kids in the closet. <laughs> Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, we all did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they turn the lights out and they talk about tell us horror stories and and so and then they realized said and then at night time uh, they'd crawl out on them because I had a big old two story barn house they'd crawl out on the roof of their bedroom window oh, yeah. they'd crawl out on the roof and they'd sleep out there on that roof. And oh so, my! Oh yeah. And I said, well, you know, if you roll off that roof, it's a long way to the ground. Well, we never thought about that. So. Some nights, all six of my kids would have their blanket sleeping on the roof of my barn. I don't know. I'm asleep in my bedroom. I'm, I think everything's good. They share quiet now. Praise God. I slept good. And so you begin to learn there's things that they didn't share everything. And oh, yeah. It's yeah, probably good what you don't know. I oh, don't yeah, wanna, yeah, yeah. I don't want to know everything. I thought the, one of the stories that you felt, felt really bad about was when you wouldn't let your daughter play basketball. Well, that was one of the worst things I ever did. Uh, I was real st- stick for making good grades. She was a straight-A student, and she made it be. And so she's scouting the basketball team. We're having a big tournament Christmas time. And I told her, no, until you get that grade back up, you're not playing any more basketball. You're sitting with me. And so she's the captain of the ball team. And so the coach came. Uh, the pastor came. The pastor's sister came. What are you doing? I'm not letting my kid play until they get that grade back up. I wonder about Grace just to be. No, she can make A's. She's a straight A's. Now, she's a college professor today. She was very smart. I knew she could make A's. Made a B. You're a lazy. No, you're not playing. 
because she was real important to her. And so I'm, I granted for two weeks, and I regretted that my whole life, man, because we lost that tournament because you know, my daughter okay, wouldn't yeah, play right. like, yeah. And so I am the north end of a southbound, and that's the cleanest way I can say it. <laughs> And those are stories that come up sometimes of family things. Dad, you remember? No, I don't. I'm trying to forget. I'm trying to forget all that. Oh, stuff. I know. My kids say to this day, "You remember when we ate spaghetti for a year?" Oh, yeah. I go, "We never ate I spaghetti know. for no a sauce. year. No sauce. My Just kids have told me stuff. Cooking. Yeah, remember when you remember when you did this? I'm like, there's no, no way, way that, that I'm sorry that didn't happen. Yep. But then I tell my parents stuff. I still yeah. tell my dad, and mom. <laughs> oh yeah, you did this, and they go. They go, no, we never did that. And I'm sitting there going, oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's universal, and every, every parent Everybody. gets told stuff by their kids. I never, never cooked spaghetti for a solid year. <laughs> no, <laughs> there was rotini months. some nights. Yeah, and, sometimes and it some was nights, pizza. Elbow, elbow macaroni, <laughs> yeah. but not spaghetti. Those are lean years. Spaghetti is cheap, you know. <laughs> a lot of macaroni and cheese, no cheese, people. <laughs> All right, let's wrap it up with this question. One, I'm trying to get direction from God. How do I know it is God speaking to me? No, that's a good. I can give a good answer. The Bible says God speaks in a still small voice, so you got to get quiet to hear God. So I tell you, sometimes you got to get out in the backyard, just go out and sit under a tree, or get on the back porch, or go for a walk, and you know, down the driveway, just get by yourself. You get still, you get quiet, you hear God. God doesn't yell; He speaks in a still small voice. He's not human; He never yells. Hey, kid, <laughs> He's not going to yell. So if I got something important to sign, it's like I got to get quiet. I know. For me, it's yard work. If I do yard work, I hear from God. Yeah. I used to have that big old, we had that big old farm back in Tennessee. I got on that tractor. It'd take two days to mow all that grass. And so my greatest moments were on that tractor every week. We go on the tractor. We're going to, I'm going to fellowship with God. Cause you're out there in the mower, you know, you can't hear nothing. And so we just mow and you're mowing. And all of a sudden you get so quiet and like all of a sudden you hear God. And she said, where did you get that thought? Mowing grass. I got quiet. But I have seen people, what are y'all's thoughts on this, uh, where they say, I've heard from God, and then it never works. And it's just like, wait, what are you listening to there? Well, you got, there's two sides of that. Yeah. Uh, you, you, no, you didn't hear from God. You thought that up yourself, or you listened to the radio or something. Uh, and it's just because you heard from God, that doesn't mean it's good. Right. <laughs> you could hear from God like, okay, son. Uh, Correcting. St- storm's going to come. Boat's mm-hmm. going to sink. But you're not going to drown. I'm sorry. What? Yeah, God sends an angel to the great apostle Paul, and it, they're already they're already sick. They've already thrown all the stuff overboard. I mean, they're, it's a bad storm. They can't get to shore. The man, the waves, are, and so they're puking their guts out over the side. And an angel shows up. And, oh, Paul, hey, are you here to keep the boat afloat? No, I'm here to tell you it's going down. <laughs> Yep, but this boat's going to sink. I got to work with God. This boat's going to sink. No, no, you're an angel. You're supposed to keep it afloat. Nope. It's going to sink, but you won't drown. And then you're going to, and they didn't tell him about the snake body. Should have told him that. You're going to, yeah, you, I would have liked to know yeah. that one. He yeah. gets on the shore and the snake bites. That's what made him famous. That's where revival broke out. Why? Poor snake bit him, didn't die. I, I would say that, if, especially if you're a new believer, if, if the first thing you want to do, if, if you want, if you're questioning whether something's God or not, is, does it go against something the Bible says? Thank you. That's it. Uh, so if 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 you say, well, I heard from God, and they said I'm supposed to believe uh, for this, I'm supposed to believe, I'm supposed to marry this woman. But that, yeah, there but, you but go. This woman's and we've had married. those happen. I'm telling. Yeah, you. but the woman's married. No, that wasn't God. So if you can cancel it out by if you can put it up against the Word of God, and then the Word of God, you can see that it's not biblical. Then that wasn't God. Thank and you. And then the second one is, if you do think it's God. And you're doing your best to hear from God, and you make a mistake. He knows your heart, and He will be the first one to go to bat for you yep. and help you correct it if it's if it's if you made a mess of things. So yeah, I mean, I don't think that's the one thing we don't have to worry about. Just like any good parent, if your kid thought I did this, and they it, and you've you've I thought you wanted me to do this, and I did this. <laughs> yeah. There's no parent in the world that's going to like hold that against you. They're going to say, "No, we'll we'll fix this. We'll fix yep. this. No, I want you to do this." Yep. So at least you're moving forward and you're trying. So yep. God knows that He knows. There your are heart, no so. perfect people. There's no. a lot of getting back up people. Well, and well, let me see what Mike said. The Bible says the mouth of two or three witnesses of things established. If you're believing God for something, you got to. I need to find at least three scriptures. You find me three scriptures to back that up, or I'm not going to believe that. What well, God told me to do this. Can you find me three scriptures about that? Well, it's not in the Bible. No, there's something about everything in the Bible. 
It's in, it's in there somewhere. So just be patient, find some scriptures, and start praying the word, not what you thought you heard. Well, God, you promised this to Bible. You said, with long life, will you satisfy me? Show me your salvation. Well, we got a bad report in the doctor. No, God said, he's supposed to be long life. And I got three scriptures to back it up. I'm going to live a long time. Well, you know, and even even I've seen seasoned Christians say, oh, yeah. say, uh, well, I'm going to put a fleece before God <laughs> and or something like that. And the thing is, a fleece is old covenant. In the new covenant, it says that as are many of us are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That we have fleece. a right <laughs> to be led by the Spirit yeah. of God. So we don't have to put – you get you stick a fleece out there, you might get – Yeah, get and, by, and by a fleece <laughs> – by a fleece, if you don't, I'm familiar with that, I won't go into ex- explanation of the, ori- or the or origins of it, but I, like I knew. Uh, a, Get the a, short a, version. They need to fl- hear. Most well, people don't know. Yeah, that's true. I'll let you tell the biblical. No, the, the, I'm no, you. you no. Know. Go ahead. Let him finish. But, well, I was just saying is, is that, for instance, this, this is an up-to-date fleece story. <laughs> I had a friend of mine who was believing, who wanted a Harley Davidson motorcycle, and he said, I'm going to go – Check this out. I'm going to fill out the paperwork for it, and if I get a loan, then I'll know it was God that wanted me to get it. Whoa! Well, he got the loan, <laughs> and his parent, and he suffered for a year, a year and a half. He ended up selling it, but it put his family in such financial, you know, and and got over it, and ended up selling it. They're fine. You know, the kids didn't go to hell or nothing. You know, I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, but. Just saying, like, oh well, if God, if it's God's will, this will happen, or if it's God's will, that no, that doesn't. Yeah, that, yeah. You're just saying, you know, I'm going to do this, and then <laughs> if this happens, then then it's God, and if it doesn't happen, then it's not. No, because Paul, I mean, it, it, it's like people say, well, if I get a bunch of, if, if I'm doing something, if I'm going a certain direction, or I'm believing God to go a certain direction in a job or whatever, and you get a bunch of flack, you think, well, it wasn't God then, because yep. it wouldn't be like I that. Well, Paul, Apostle Paul, man, I mean, he. Look at him. Nothing he ever did was in yeah, God's will. If, it, yeah, if you can't if go getting by that. Flack, Three you can't get that. Yeah, got so. Quit, beat to death. Like, what are you doing? Well, I'm in the will of God. I'm just right in the middle of the will of God. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much for joining us here on Mailbag Monday. We're always thrilled. Please check out our stuff. That's great resources like Smart Moms, our new book, uh, on joemcgee.com, the store. And, again, don't forget to share this. Uh, pray for us. And we are praying for you. We love you guys. Stay in church. Read your Bible. And hug on somebody you love. (laughs) Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family. We're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.